All right, guys, today we are going to be doing something that's kind of fun, a little bit unusual. I feel like that's some of my content here of late. We're going to be talking about some of the weird knives in my collection. We're going to go over the four weirdest fixed blades and the four weirdest folders or pocket knives because not all of them are exactly folders but um we're gonna go over them kind of talk about them break them down because i think that they're unique crazy and sometimes the weird knives don't always like fit into categories for me to talk about that frequently so while i enjoy having them in the collection they're not always the easiest to integrate and talk about so we're gonna start we're gonna go least weird to most weird for the fixed blades and then the folders. So first up, like I said, least weird fixed blade would have to be my Busey. This is my WS1021. And this guy's kind of just a trailing point, um, you know, hunting knife, if you will, bushcrafting wilderness blade as a whole, but it's pretty cool. And I think that this camo on here makes it a little bit weird, a little bit wacky. You just don't see a lot of knives like this. So it's just a cool knife. It's uh, unique and different. Once again, this one does actually fit into some of my other other categories so it gets a little bit more airtime. Now something that's a little bit more weird is my Demko Knives Arminger 2. This thing is a tiny tiny little knife and this is originally designed if memory serves to be essentially like a keychain fixed blade. So it's weird it's designed like their normal clip point Armingers but it is definitely a three finger weird kind of knife because it's basically a normal looking knife but just shrunk down to be ultra small so it is so tiny, so petite, but um, it is just really wacky and cool in a way. All right, next one up is the Tkel Nightshade Reverse Tonto. Now, for some people, they might say, oh, this is just a worn cliff blade. What's so special about this? But it's really more of a kind of, you know, self-defense knife because actually this thing isn't that good at cutting or breaking down things like cardboard. So it's really designed to be more of a self-defense kind of style knife and kind of a karam karambit or karambit, however you want to call it. Now, what makes this one particularly unique and as you guys can probably see and what I think honestly makes it weird, even though some people probably don't see it initially, is the fact that this upper edge, this whole upper edge on the reverse Tonto is sharpened. And this is something that you don't really see with reverse Tonto knives. And so that gives us a very, very sharp and very strong ability to penetrate things and stab things. But it also really gives it that extra kind of weirdness or cool factor because your whole upper edge on the reverse Tonto is actually sharpened as opposed to just one side or just your main cutting edge. So as you guys can see here, it's already, already picking up skin on me. But that is because once again, when you have a sharpened upper edge on there you have that true fine point I mean this thing is almost essentially like having a broad-headed arrow and so if you do use this in a self-defense situation or you do stab with it you're going to have a tremendous amount of power and a tremendous amount of cut behind it so that does make it a little bit more unusual and a little bit more weird all right next one up is going to be one that is a classic staple of my weird knives and knives on the channel and that is the browse blade silent soldier this is just a weird fixed blade because you don't really see anything like the browse blade silent soldier even nowadays nothing really has come out that looks like this and so it has such an weird and unique handle that you know you put your fingers through these you know holes these large holes um, and you, know, you hold it kind of like so and you know this one is really more designed to be a you know a box cutter it's not really designed for like you know stabbing things or protecting yourself though of course you could do that potentially but this is just a very unique design to make an ultra compact fixed blade that is you know both small but still very functional and you can get your fingers in and around so that is the browse blades silent soldier once again something you can't really get anymore they no longer make the silent soldier um, browse blades so or at least in a fixed blade configuration like such they do make it in like a weird flipper folder thing but yeah all right now let's step over to the fixed or fixed blades folders so first up like i said least weird to most weird is for me i was sitting there thinking i was like honestly one that kind of strikes me as a weirder knife even though i think the spider coast spidey chef really doesn't like on the outset this doesn't really look like a weird knife and i think most people in the knife collecting world have accepted this knife as you know just a, another edc knife but if you actually look at the blade shape of this 
this knife when it comes to traditional like actual applications. So let's just say, you know, the knife that I have in my pocket today is a Hinder XM18 three inch. And so this has a Spanto styled tip to it. Not really that weird, you know, pretty standard, um, you know, just edge for cutting things, right? This is what a normal folder looks like. And you look at the Spidey Chef and it's very weird. The edge is a very elongated, you know, rolling belly. And that is of course, because this was designed to be a folding chef's knife, like a pocket folding chef's knife. And I will say, you know, like I said, people do actually EDC these and use them, you know, in just everyday, you know, carry and, and use. And so, like I said, I think it's kind of one of those knives that, you know, people look at the Spidey Chef and they don't think much of it, but actually seeing one open, like if you hold it with this side profile, you notice that that tip is highly upswept and, you know, of course it has a bit of a sheep's footed blade. And so it's designed really for more of a rocking motion and designed to be used for kind of, you know, cutting things essentially like this, as opposed to like this, because most of times when we cut with our knives, or cutting like this or you know this type of motion whereas this is designed if you were to hold it you know exactly flat you notice that most of your belly and most of your blade is kind of just sticking up in the air so it's designed to really be held more like this to get into that belly or you know of course to rock the blade so it's a very interesting knife and i think the idea once again what kind of strikes me as weird about this pocket knife is that it's designed from the ground up to be a pocket chef's knife or like a folding chef's knife which is just something that like honestly you don't see anywhere else like no one else has a pocket folding chef's knife out there so it's kind of weird in that regard all right, next one up, and the blade shape is probably the least weird thing on this knife, is the Paragon Phoenix. The Paragon Phoenix is a cool knife that I actually, you know, I, I've had it for a while now, but semi-recently acquired, I got it this year, and it's a knife that I had wanted to get for quite some time, because I think that this whole Warlock slash, you know, um, gravity knife-esque kind of just folding mechanism, like how this, you know, like kind of gravity knifes itself is just a very weird, you know, system, but I think it's very cool. Like it's weird, but it's cool and it's very fidgety too. But this knife, you know, while not the most practical for maybe like cutting open boxes and stuff, it's just a very weird and cool, like kind of collectible knife in that regard. And um, it still is, you know, a performance knife. It's in CPM S30V. It's not the newest or hottest steel, but still completely you know, relevant and fine, but I think it is just a really cool design, really cool, you know, like thought process when it comes to this knife, how the handle, you know, like splits in two and it allows you to, you know, drop that knife blade if it wants to come out and, you know, uh, deploy it like that. So very cool, very unusual knife. This is the type of knife that, you know, hand to a friend and they look at this and they're like, how the hell is this, you know, even, you know, work. And so it's kind of a weird knife in the way that it opens and not so much its application. Now, blending in both weirdness in opening and in application, we have the Emerson Knives Elvia. Now, this is a little bit of a newer um, pickup for me, and I've actually been wanting an Elvia, like, this knife's kind of been weird to me because I've wanted an Elvia for a while, but at the same time, too, the Elvia is kind of one of those, like, Spyderco matriarch knives where it has such a highly... Um, like defined use application that this is not the type of knife that you're going to use to open your mail. This isn't the type of, you know, knife you're going to use to unbox your Amazon packages. You know, this is not the type of knife that you're going to use in traditional knife tasks. So this is the type of knife that you're going to be pulling out for self-defense only. That's why I say it's a very Spyderco matriarch styled knife, because this is something that's really just designed for self-defense. It's not really designed for anything else. This is not like if you try to hold this, so you're you know, liner lock is here, so you, you know, like, let's say you deploy it like this. If you try to hold this like a traditional knife, the blade is like way far off kilter. Even the actual motion of opening this knife, you know, this whole action, you're bringing this usually, typically when you open a knife, it's opening at about a 180 degree axis. And this still technically does open at a 100 degree, 180 degree axis, but, um, you know, you are typically expecting the blade to stop maybe here or maybe here, but it actually keeps going back until it opens way back here. So the LV is a very weird and eccentric knife, but it is designed to be a folding pick call. So once again, similar to, you know, a folding, um, 
chef's knife, we do have pakals that exist in, their, in the world, but most every pakal that you see are going to be fixed blades, almost kind of more like shank styled. You know, they're kind of rough and tumble made. So this is actually like a well-made folding pakal. And so there really aren't that many, if any other folding pakal designs, because it does take, you know, kind of a weird style. Like folding karambits are much easier to make in a traditional style. They just have weirder, you know, karambit styled blades. But, um, you know, with a pakal, you have to make this reverse facing blade. So it's definitely very eccentric, but yeah, this is how you are supposed to hold it. And you have this central, very large divot here to kind of act as your guiding point to give your hand that reference, especially if you, if you have to deploy this without looking at it or deploy it in the dark, you know, you can pretty much find your reference point, know where you're at and have your knife ready. So I like the idea of pakals and I like the idea of a folding pakal and the Elvia is definitely unfortunately due to what Emerson is and unfortunately due to how many of these that Emerson makes not to say that these are at all easy to make so I don't fault Emerson but these are almost unfortunately more collector's items at this point and that's why I had kind of led with the fact that I've wanted an Elvia for a while but most of the Elvias that you see for sale online or even in person are you know three like just the stock standard price from Emerson they're $330 and so most of the time due to how limited production they are. People pick them up, resell them for over $400. In fact, um, one of my nice stores that I frequent had in Elvia um, that was very similar to this guy for sale and it was, I think, $440. So unfortunately, um, you know, that's not necessarily the type of knife that you wanna buy and carry as a self-defense knife when you have to spend that much. Luckily, I found a killer deal, absolutely steal of a deal for my Elvia and when I saw it for the price that I paid for it, I absolutely had to buy it. Like there was no question in my mind. The moment I saw it, I was like, that Elvia is coming home with me. So I ended up picking up my Elvia for a crazy deal. But um, yeah, the Elvia is a very cool knife by Emerson. I do wish they would make more of them because I wish they weren't so much of a collector's item. But unfortunately in this current state of affairs, they are essentially more of a collector's item, but they do have real use applications if you know how to use a Picard in self-defense. All right, last one up is the Emerson Sark. Now, um, or sorry, this is the NSAR, not the Sark. This is based off the Sark, <laughs> my bad. Um, this is the NSAR. And I will say to Emerson's credit, they make a lot of very eccentric knives. Once again, we just talked about one eccentric um, Emerson, and I feel like we've kind of gone to the other side of the spectrum. So the last knife we talked about from Emerson was a self-defense knife. This is a rescue knife from Emerson. So that's one of the things I like about Emerson. Emerson, they carry or they they span a wide bridge of use applications. Now, once again, this is the NSAR, which stands for Navy Search and Rescue. Um, and so this was designed specifically for Navy dive teams that needed something that can cut webbing extremely quickly and also form or perform as a emergency um, survival and rescue knife. So this is not so much the survival in the wilderness sense of survival, but if some one is once again trapped under water and is drowning or you know needs to be cut free from webbing or any type of entanglement or even if they're not underwater and they're above ground and once again say they have burnt clothes or they need you need to or say they have clothes that you need to cut off of them or once again a seat belt strap is you know um getting in the way of rescuing them. You have a very deep and very well-made um, rescue hook here. This is not a gut hook for those wondering. This is very much more of a rescue hook. So this is designed to fit most, you know, diameters of like webbing and nylon belts and stuff like that. So you can easily get it in there and cut. And the thing that I love about this, um, <clears throat> rescue hook is once again it is very deep but it's also a very well-made rescue hook this is very well polished you can see even on this side they have come through and polished this and this is an incredibly sharp hook most of your things like gut hooks on like hunting knives these are kind of just half-ass sharpened but this is incredibly sharp you can slice paper with this hook so that means that if you do dig this into nylon webbing it is going to slice through it so it is very very well made in that regard. Now, in typical Sark fashion or search and rescue knife fashion, this NSAR is one, one um, 
blunt at the tip. So of course, you're not going to stab anyone with this, which is important when you're potentially putting this alongside someone's skin. But also too, this is a recurved blade. So the whole of this blade is curved towards the center. That once again, in a survival and rescue application means that you're bunching up, say you're cutting someone's clothes off. It's bunching all that material into the center of the blade here and gathering it, cutting it, and you know going along with it. The other thing I like from an actual, um, you know, kind of, I wouldn't say super experienced, but semi experienced, you know, um, rescue application is what I like about this um, curvature of this blade is that if you do set this along, say you set this along someone's skin and you're going along, you know, you hit their clothes like this, for instance, hopefully you can see the nice thing about the curvature of this blade, it allows you to have that blade up and off of the person's skin. So of course you do have that blunt tip, so it's not going to go into their skin, but having this blade up and off their skin like this allows once again, that whole curvature of the blade to feed the clothes or feed that material, whatever the material may be you're feeding that material up onto the blade where it's getting cut and then for good measure on the NSARS you have a good spot of serration so once again if say you hit webbing or you hit nylon rope or you hit something like that it's going to go up and if it doesn't get cut on the blade it's going to hit the serrations and it's going to just get absolutely um, obliterated so it's going to cut not only textiles really well but it's going to cut you know your cordages your ropes it's going to cut any of your type of fabric incredibly well so i like that part about it of course too when this handle is or when the knife is closed you can still have access to your um, hook here, your rescue hook to get in and cut things if you need to as well. Now this little ranger bead on here is just something I do with a lot of my Emersons. This did not come on the blade um, stock. I just have that on there, but that is the uh, NSAR from Emerson. So it's a very purpose built knife. As you can see, a lot of time and effort and energy went into the whole of the design to be as rescue knife focused as possible. And that's what I like about the NSAR over things like Benchmade's triage or other different rescue knives that exist, especially the combat Trudon rescue knife from Microtech. That is a ridiculously expensive and honest just toy at that point. But anyways, the NSAR is actually pretty rare. You don't really see many out in the wild. And once again, similar to the Elvia, they are very expensive. And unfortunately, they are made in very limited production numbers. So honestly, once again, ironically, like my Elvia, I saw it at um, less than half the normal price of the NSAR, like what they go for at retail. And so when I saw that, I absolutely had to buy one. Like there was no question. Um, I was going to buy an NSAR at that price. So I was lucky to obtain um, the NSAR and the Elvia at very, very reasonable prices. Not going to disclose how much I paid for either of them, but well below even retail. And so I was very, very happy and ecstatic to find them for what they were going for. Anyways, um, that is my look at some of the weirdest knives in my collection. And once again, like I said, things like the Elvia, the NSAR, um, Phoenix, they don't really get a lot of airtime because they're just very use specific or they have very specific use cases. So unless I'm doing a video talking about rescue knives or talking about self-defense knives, the Elvia and the NSAR and others just don't really get any. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.